By the end of the 18th century, the Japanese empire had closed its doors to the outside world for almost two centuries. No one could leave and foreigners were excluded. A little known exception was the tiny walled island of Dejima in Nagasaki Harbor, a Dutch trading post populated by just a handful of Europeans. On this strange but true island, the merchants lived like prisoners, separated from Europe by the vast expanse of sea, divided from Japan by a small bridge and an enormous cultural gap. This is the setting for David Mitchell's fifth novel, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoot. In Mitchell's hands, Dejima becomes a stage where the exchange of power and ideas between the Japanese, the Dutch, and even the British Navy leads to adventure and romance. So, David, your book is about a really extraordinary world um, that I must say I, I just wasn't aware of, this world where the Dutch are present in Japan. Uh, I'm curious, how did you... How did you come across this world, number one? And number two, when did you decide that this would be a suitable territory for a novel? Uh, in 1996 or so, I spent my first winter in Japan and uh, I went on a long tour of the West, uh, which took in Nagasaki. Uh, I couldn't read the streetcar signs in those days, so I got off at the wrong streetcar stop and instead of um, finding a good cheap lunch, uh, I found Dejima. And your novel is, well, certainly the beginning of your novel is very much set in this rather curious enclave. Yes, um, it fascinated me then, uh, and still does. Um, I think of it as a kind of a cultural cat flap through which uh, everything that people knew about Japan exited and everything that Japan knew about the Western world entered. But at the centre of the book is this, this relationship, I suppose, through the cat flap or across the cultural divide between the, the female midwife, Japanese female midwife, and Jacob de Zoot, if that's how you pronounce him. The Dutch might go for de Zoot. De Zoot. Okay. Now, th their relationship is very touching. Well, I say touching, that's the wrong word probably, because that's the one thing they never do. Yeah. Uh, my wife's Japanese, and she would murder me if I had written a novel uh, where uh, an average European goes Nagasaki and all the mysterious oriental ladies just swoon at his feet. In a way, the novel, the course of the novel, was actually dictated by what I mustn't do. I love the way that de Zoot proposes. He proposes to her by giving her a Dutch dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Or he's yeah. like, here's my culture. The... Here, this is me. And it's... But he gives it to her in the form of a book. And here are the keys to all of these other books that you can't read because they're in Dutch. Uh, it's the dictionary would have, would have perhaps been the most valuable thing. It would have been the Rosetta Stone for the Japanese scholars. Mr. Ogawa, when you searched my books on my first morning ashore, you, you saw my dictionary, I believe. New dictionary of Dutch language. Yes, very fine and rare book. It would, I assume, be of use to a Japanese scholar of Dutch. Dutch dictionary is magic key to open many locked doors. I desire then, Jacob hesitates, to present it to Miss Ibagawa. Wind-harried voices reach them like echoes from a deep well. Ogawa's face is stern and unreadable. How do you think, probes Jacob, she might respond to such a gift? Ogawa's fingers pluck at a knot around his sash. Much surprise. You're well known for experimenting with narrative structure and, and telling stories backwards, for example, or, or interrupting stories halfway through and moving the reader somewhere else. You know, in a sense, this book does have a conventional narrative structure. I, I try to avoid um, thinking about how I am seen by the world at large because it's not good for you. Uh, but after Cloud Atlas, I, I couldn't help but notice that I, I was beginning to be nudged into a niche where I was Mr. Young postmodern writer. Uh, but actually the technical challenge that, that intrigued me was how could you write a novel that looks more, a little bit more like a traditional novel, yet it not be? When I was reading the book, I couldn't help thinking of it almost as a series of Venn diagrams. You've got Dejima, then you've got Japan itself, which is a, 
an enclosed or isolated society. And then within Japan, you've got the Venn diagram of the mountain shrine. And so it seems to me it's very much about these sort of isolated or, or, or enclosed or self-enclosed communities. Uh, I've noticed I have a thing about islands. Uh, there's loads of islands in my novels. Uh, and islands can be geographic or they can be cultural or social or, or one man, one woman islands as well. Well, there's uh, that in the book too. Yeah. I mean, your two central characters are islands. Yeah. Jacob de Zoot, I suppose, morally is on, an on, is, is, is on a one man island. What is. She swivels her head to show puzzlement. Jacob. The name my parents gave me, Jacob. My full name is Jacob de Zoot. She gives a cautious nod. Jacob de Zuto. I wish, he thinks, spoken words could be captured and kept in a locket. I think, in a sense, where the book's at its best is where people aren't quite understanding each other. And it's this sort of perpetual comedy of semi-misunderstanding, sometimes tragedy. The book only really came alive when, um, as I was writing it when I realised that this was an asset. It wasn't an obstacle to be somehow overcome. Uh, in an early draft, I worked really hard to think of just about plausible reasons as to why they could understand each other well enough. Uh, but it was creaking under the strain. And only when I thought, um, actually, this could be really rich. The point is they don't understand one another all the time. But are you saying that you wrote a whole draft of the book where everybody understood each other uh, from beginning to end? So uh, you've written the book twice? Oh, three times, actually, yeah. It's, uh, I wrote it with a different structure. I wrote it in the first person the first time. and um, My God! I know, four years. It did my head in, and it really did my head in this book. Wow. Yeah. Well, I hope, all I say is I hope that the next uh, project that you find or finds you is, for your sake, a little more straightforward. It's been a great pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.